it's time to return to this week's challenge where Jason and I had to build a pet gadget. Yes, I plumped for dogs. So those of you who love dogs, dog owners, maybe even dogs, right now, sitting on the carpet watching with your owners, you'll know <laughs> what I'm talking about when I say that dogs love to run after things. So that's what I decided to do, a sort of uh, device that would enable a dog to run after a ball and retrieve it. Yes, I was going to exploit that unique side of their personality. Okay, whereas I am all about the cats. I love cats. I've grown up with cats. I've got a cat. And in fact, if I didn't choose cats, my cat Ginger would never speak to me again. Your, your cat can't talk, Susie. Cats cannot talk, all right? They can poop in a basket, they can jump onto an infeasibly high wall, but they can't talk. Cam, there's a cat on YouTube that says hello. <sighs> is that really? Yes, there really is. Okay. <laughs> Having already spent hours bonding with our chosen animals and researching the gadgets they like, we were at Middlesex University to put our own gadget ideas into production. I reckon I know what I'm going to do. It's an automated ball throwing and retrieval device, all right? So you can put it in a space like this or in your back garden. While you sit down, the device is going to throw the ball for your dog. Your dog's going to get it, bring it back, put it back in the device, and the device will throw it again. And it can even then randomise the process so the ball never goes in the same direction twice. Genius. And I'd been thinking about a gadget for those independent moggies. When they disappear through that cat flap, who wouldn't want to know where they've been and what they've been up to? I certainly would. And that's why I'm going to devise a gadget that tracks the cat and hopefully offers video feed as well. <laughs> We'd both be getting help from the university's Department of Product Design, and I was busy scheming with designers Wynn and Tom. The, the device fires it, the dog grabs it, runs back here, and puts the ball back in the scoop and thus automates the entire ball throwing scenario. Would you want to add anything in, give some more interactivity? We can give it encouragement, we can give it a treat. The... Yeah, I think that's a great idea. Basically, this is doable. That's what you're saying. Yep. Awesome. Suitably inspired, we moved on to some prototypes for the launch mechanism. <laughs> oh. We needed to get a big launch but from a small device, and we eventually settled on a circular design. Yeah. We were then able to start prototyping the rest of the elements required for a fully automated system, a directional launcher, treat dispenser, and a ball collection device. Genius, boys. But the real challenge would be getting all these elements to work together in one machine. Meanwhile, I was getting some advice from product designer Andy on my cat tracking video device. I wanted to harness the type of GPS tech I'd seen in mobile tracking devices before, such as the CAT tracking unit, but make it small enough to fit on an actual cat. You can get something like this now, though. This has got a GPS chip in it, and it's also got a GSM module, so it will work over the phone network. And what you do is you can phone this module up, and then it will text back the GPS co coordinates to you. So no matter where your cat is, you'll get a GPS fix on it. That was actually quite light, isn't it? And it's not just GPS units that are getting smaller. You can get a small wireless camera that's about that big, yeah. again, pretty light, which we can encase and house under the cat's chin. So, so is that it then? Job done? Just something like that together? If only it was that simple. Yeah, I had the key bits of hardware, but the challenge would be combining them to produce one usable device. And to do that, we began to create a basic web application. This would display the video feed and convert the GPS coordinates received via mobile phone into an easy-to-read map. We're pretty much there, got those last, last few lines of code to crack. A week later, and my ball launcher had gone from wooden prototype to a CAD-designed robotic monster. Dogbot was born. Hey, how you doing? Nice to see you again. My God, it's incredible. <laughs> With its launch mechanism and automated platform to randomise the direction of throw, my contraption may have looked a bit eccentric, but the tech was the mutt's nuts. <laughs> I love it! To avoid hitting dogs in the face, we also put in an infrared proximity sensor. As soon as something's quite close, it will stop the programme so that it's safe for the dogs. And its intelligence is all controlled with a small computer and a fidget, a USB device that allows you to control mechanics using simple visual programming. We've even added in voice recordings to bring the machine to life. Good boy. Good boy. Fetch. <coughs> And next door, I was in the lab getting ready to test CatCam. The web app was up and running, communicating via text with the GPS unit and displaying the video feed from the camera, both of which had been housed with moulded plastic and attached to a standard cat harness. 
All I needed now was a willing test pilot. Although it has to be said, Archie didn't look overjoyed with his new toy. There you go. Let's see where he goes. Alex, the cat. Is it working? There it is, going now. Ah hey! The tech worked, showing us Archie's brief exploration of the department on camera and on our map. Even though after a while, he decided to sulk in the corridor, refusing to budge. While Susie dealt with a moody moggy, I was getting ready to try out my prototype ball launcher and hoping for more success with my tester. <laughs> Hello, this is Molly. She's the best of the dogs that we've seen at running after balls. She's born to run after balls. Wait. But how would she react to my crazy looking prototype launcher? Fetch. Go on, Molly. It's brilliant. Yay, here goes the ball. Off you go. It needed a few tweaks. Oh. <laughs> And some training for Molly. Almost. You see, she's getting there. But basically, it worked. Fetch. Deck chair, feet up with your flip-flops. Molly runs around all day. It's the perfect scenario, isn't it? Oh, Great. I love this. Oh, good. Some really good ideas, but it's quite big, isn't it? It's a little on the large side. You know, side. can you imagine? I'm just going to take the dog for a walk. Uh, over to the park. Check you're taking the mick. Why? It's a prototype. It's a proof of concept. I know. What about you? What? And your poor cat, the reason he sat... What was his name? Archie. The reason Archie sat so exhausted and forlorn in the middle of that corridor was because that thing's so heavy, it was muscle fatigue. Poor cat couldn't move. He was like... <laughs> <laughs> He did have a little walk around. This is a it prototype did. as well. It worked really well as well. Anyway, after the break, our gadgets are going to be judged by professionals. And right here in the studio, there will be a winner and a loser. And whoever loses will apparently have to face an animal-based forfeit. I can't wait for that bit. Why? Well, I don't know. It's just exotic, isn't it? The no, you might sense of jeopardy. What about if you have to eat a bowl of cat food or something? Well, or lick a, lick a mouse. Join us after the break. Lick a mouse? Yeah, you might have to snog a dog. I can think of all. I, honestly, You've a few I dogs. can think <laughs> of forfeits. <laughs>